Papa Squad. Come in at you. Hey, everybody. It is Saturday. It is 8 o'clock in the evening. I'm just realizing it's this late. I don't know how it's this late. Uh, oh, I guess I did run out for a while. Uh, so, we're going to listen to a song from 1983. I haven't done anything from way in the past for a while now. And, um... It is actually really weird to me to say way in the past to when I was a kid. Uh, you someday will also say that. Um, but Planet Patrol is an American electro group. I like electro. And I know we've listened to Planet Patrol before, but I don't think we've actually read their Wikipedia page. Um, originating, originating in the 1980s, the members were Arthur Baker, John Roby, and a quintet of, quintet of vocalists led by Herbert J. Jackson, who is the lead singer, Joseph Lights, Rodney Butler, Michael Anthony Jones, and Melvin B. Franklin, not to be confused with Melvin Franklin of The Temptations. Ah, which, yeah, certainly that would have only been 20 years before, 10, 20 years before, and they, The Temptations were still very well known. Um, the group only produced a single album, the self-titled Planet Patrol, in 1983, which peaked at number 64 on the Billboard R&B album chart, uh, because there was no hip-hop chart. In fact, I don't even know if there is now. Do they do they separate out um, hip-hop and rap versus R&B? Because they're certainly different things. Um, but maybe they're grouped under the same. The group's most popular song, Play at Your Own Risk, which I'm fairly certain is the song we've done already, was created from tracks that did not make the final version of Africa Bombada's seminal Planet Rock. Ah, yeah, that's what I remember. I do remember that. And, um, so anyway, this is going to be Planet Patrol with Cheap Thrills. Don't know this at all. I should have clicked on this already to, uh, make sure we don't get an ad. But let's uh, let's see what this looks like. Begin with us. There you go. Begin There's the us. ad, right? They're not they're not paying me for this ad time, so we'll just watch it and not listen to it. There, take that. <laughs> This is cool. This is very, very electro. Um, wow. Uh, really weird. It's still... Uh, I'm starting the whole thing over because I really didn't know what to expect. Um, it's very electronic, like early electronic music, which is what electro is. Uh, but it surprises me how much it is because it doesn't really sound all that disco -y. Definitely still a dance song. But this is like a club party dance song, not a disco club, and maybe it'll get more disco, but let's let's jump in again here. Uh, sorry, I didn't notice. Six minutes, 48 seconds. Love that start. Nice. This is great! Ah, there's... There's the very 80s simple electronic e beat uh, to the drum that really anchors it in that time period like so so much but man that first half a minute or so before the drum came in was totally cool this piano thing was also very common in, at this time I like it. Thrills, 
So, it's interesting because um, you don't really hear this anymore where you've got two, three, four, five different people singing at the same time. And, and I th I'm not sure exactly how they recorded this, if it was one person and then they record the next person and they layer it all, or if they're all in rooms or, you know, one person sings and then they get whoever's backing them up to sing together. But you don't really hear that anymore. It's very much about a, like a lead singer or a couple of singers. Uh, and this is sort of interesting because I was trying to think like why does this sound so much as like the singing uh, so much of as being from the 1980s and I think it's because it has multiple singers which is interesting to consider. So he's got this falsetto going now, and his his normal voice is w absolutely what he should stick with. It's he's got a fantastic voice. Oh. It's so great to hear all the individual voices of the, the people who were singing together because they're they're sort of similar. I can certainly pick them out one to the next when they are are right next to each other. And uh, man, really some great sounding voices and they alternate between like a, a nice uh, whatever the high voice is a tenor tenor is high bass is low i know that but they they alter between uh, a, a bunch of different notes and it's it really sounds good because they all have their own sort of little personality to their voices <laughs> So remember, we got sounds like dee -dee 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 in the middle of songs like that back in the 80s, so you don't have to have them now because they were they were playing to see what sounded good. And uh, just like evolution is real, uh, evolution in music is also real. And you know this this is what music has has sort of become over time. And it started with dee -dee 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 -dee, which I think is just a ridiculous thing to include in a song. So I know this is a musical break between verses, at least I hope so, I hope the rest of the song isn't just music, but um, it's kind of funky because they have uh, uh, they have all this dee -dee 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 -dee, boo 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 and I kind of get the feeling again that the producer is just kind of playing around with sounds that they like to hear and again the song is almost seven minutes long so they had some space to play with. I 
like that slamming sound. Yeah, this is absolutely just the producer uh, playing around and, and doing an extension to the song because they saw, thought it sounded cool. Uh, sorry, I had to back up a little bit because my cat is sitting on my lap now. song uh, where all the guys were singing one after the other I thought it was great and it's it's also really super interesting because um, and this I'm sure this is in my head just because we read their Wikipedia page that they had like five different vocalists but they also mentioned the temptations um, because one of the guys has a similar name to one of the people in there and uh, it made me think this is very much a combination of like the 50s and 60s approach to music especially for african-american musical groups which were you know three four five guys who would all sing and perform together and wear the same outfits and they would coordinate their movements and this is just that move forward 20 25 years to a new type of music but with the same sensibilities that were instilled in the the people creating the stuff when they were kids 20 25 years earlier and uh it's it's always interesting to look at that and it's not until really it seems like the 80s the whole group of people who sing together kind of went away um and maybe that's simply because that was the best way to get your art out there was to be, you know, the, the, the songwriter of a band or the performer for a band. Um, it's, it's just sort of interesting to think about as to how, like, uh, there were all those groups, doo-wop groups and whatever, uh, R&B groups in the 50s and 60s, and then because these people grew up with that music, that's what they tried to emulate, but it was with, for the time, modern music, and it's crazy to think of. And all the stuff made today, like anything Eminem makes, he's been influenced by this stuff from the 80s, and so it's constantly getting reinvented down time because everybody has their own influences that they pull in, and it's just super interesting. That's one of the reasons why I also like hip-hop, is because those things are pretty easily identifiable. Don't need those high notes. This sounds cool, let's do some.
Uh, I, I actually, I gotta say, I find that song pretty decent. Um, it, but mostly because I like a lot of the electronic stuff going on in it. Um, it's very... It, it's not bubblegum, it, but it, it's definitely a very pop sort of song. Um, just there's no real meaning to it right they just go on it's a it's a go out party have a good time song um but definitely from that time period when you know people would go out to dance clubs and that was the thing to do so and and also i could see this being a good like skating rink song again early 80s that was a huge thing um, really neat uh, the other thing i wanted to point out is this song came out in 83 so, th you know, remember that Prince has been making music now for maybe four or five years, like with albums. Um, I think Controversy came out either in 79 or 80, and then uh, what was the other one before that? So, something like Talk Dirty or something like that. Um, but, so it's interesting to think of that, and even, you know, U2 was getting started at this time, um, just really starting to get popular, same thing, R.E.M., uh, the B-52s, like, it's, it's interesting to think that all that style of music was happening at the same time as this, and, and that's just the music that I always listen to, right? There's also things like Guns N' Roses and The Scorpions and Led Zeppelin. Uh, Led Zeppelin obviously was quite a few years even before this, but like to think about where this music sits in relation to all of that stuff and all of that then has informed all the music today and that's why you get artists that are such weird combinations of things like um, Post Malone, like uh, uh, Lil Nas X, uh, you know, it's just, it, culture is everywhere, and people absorb random little bits of it, and then it goes bleh and gets puked out in something completely new and different, even though it's not new and different, it's just all that old stuff refocused and refiltered through somebody else's head. Uh, I'm talking about a lot of stuff that I don't know if it matters to any of you, but this is the, this is why I find this stuff interesting and, and sort of my thinking on things. Um, there you go. That was good. I, I thought the music was good. Um, singing, they had great voices. It's just not, not a fantastic song to me. And, uh, but I would listen to it again. I have no problem with it. Like it's, it's just not one that I, I need to listen to, right? I think there's so much neat stuff happening in it. So, anyway, uh, that's about it. Papa Squad, checking out. Um, I think we were up to 866 followers. Holy moly. Uh, so, w welcome again, everybody. Uh, and, uh, I don't keep spreading the word. It's fun to get more and more people. And I really do appreciate all the comments, too. People have had some really nice things to say. And um, I'm not going to do too many Harry Mack videos, even though it gets me lots of great traffic. Um, I don't really care about that. Um, I just, I think he's really amazing. <laughs> and uh, I was actually thinking today it would be funny to do uh, a reaction to a reaction to Harry Mack video because i know i've seen some other reaction videos out there for him and then we can get like super meta uh anyway pop squat check it out please like subscribe and share